All right. I've had a lot of people tell me they're not going to be able to make it um, this week. I know there's a little bit of last notice, but I did want to make sure we went ahead and get, got started because we got a lot of co- topics to cover over the next week. So I'm going to also throw this up on YouTube so that you guys who have to um, bounce in and out of this meeting don't feel like that's a big deal at all. This will all be posted in the next. Um, uh, I'll post it right after I get done with this. So. All right. Um, so today's topic, it should be a relatively short meeting, um, but I did want to make sure that we all got on the same page with where we were at to date. So the meeting's going to be on passport photos and banners. Um, so most, of, all of you guys should have received your packets. I believe that the only um, any exception to that is candy, but we're going to have yours over to you later this afternoon. Uh, for everybody else, you should have received a big box that has um, all of your stuff to be able to do passport photos and banners. So if you have not received those items yet, um, please throw that into the chat box real quick. You'll definitely need that before we uh, cover pretty much anything of what we're about to talk about. All right, I'll just presume everybody at this point has that box. All right, so um, for the meeting, uh, we're going to be covering a little, a couple of little quick updates and then just diving into passport photos, banners, and a couple of things we're doing at the Print Hub. Um, so $984. Uh, anybody want to guess what uh, meaning this number has? Um, this is the number of total sales that the uh, EPS Store 2470 did in Direct TV um, during the month of December. Um, so the first real material month of direct TV. So that was super exciting. Um, so while that was certainly probably an exception rather than a rule across all of the stores, um, there was a couple other ones that had really good months of direct TV as well. Um, the Park Store uh, with Jody did $256 in direct TV sales. The Yield Store did $115 in uh, direct TV sales. It seemed like the Tampa average was probably somewhere around 80 bucks. Um, the South Georgia average was probably around three or four hundred dollars um, per store. So lots to get excited about. Um, we've seen a lot of different ways <laughs> as I went around. Uh, the first thing that we kind of recommended to everybody was to use the three box method for uh, keeping for keeping track of these um, packages. So I've seen a lot of different uh, creative interpretations on it. But as somebody who's seen about seven or uh, six or seven different creative interpretations. And the execution of them, I can uh, most certainly say this three box method, um, which I attached the picture of over here, is the best way, um, without a doubt, to keep up with these boxes. In the Tampa stores where we're not getting as many of these items, I also recommend going ahead and writing the date under where you see it in Sharpie. There it says AT&T, DirecTV, you no know, packaging materials. I go ahead and write the return date on that box so that your associates know that once that day has came, we can go ahead and return these and ring it up as a sale. Because these are, um, they're pretty material sales. They're somewhere between 15 to $20, depending on how they were packaged up and how they're going back. So definitely don't miss the opportunity for that sale. Um, if it, does anybody have any questions about the three box method and uh, kind of how that works, having an AT&T box, DirecTV box, and then one box for everything that it says no packaging materials, which would be both DirecTV and AT&T items? Yeah, I didn't think anybody would. All right, moving on to the next. Um, passport photos. Um, so we rolled this out um, probably, or actually got into most of the stores mid-January. So over the month of January, we had a uh, 1977, had about $87 in sales. They have been doing this for about a year. Uh, 42 I mean, they're pretty close to $100 in sales for uh, passport photos. So way to go to those guys that got started with passport photos. Then from there, uh, we have a nice little drop off. Um, Howard having uh, one sale, passport photo sale, $14.99. USF had a, um, a very discounted sale, $4.97. And every other store had $0 in passport photo sales. So um, my gut tells me that we uh, are missing the, uh, that we have a training issue on passport photos. So we're going to go through a little bit how it was done. And at the end of this, I'm going to task all of you guys with going through with each of your associates how to get started with passport photos. Because every store should be ready to go at this point. Um, so the passport photos, Elena, I, I called you out uh, earlier in the meeting. Um, uh, after about two or three minutes, uh, I acknowledged that you didn't have yours. I believe it's at the print hub. Dane's checking, and then we're going to have it over to you this afternoon. Um, so all you got to do is uh, – you're fine. 
All you got to do is make sure that you uh, are comfortable with all this material on here. So the passport photo requirements. Um, there's not, it's not a complicated thing to do with these passport photos at all, but there are certain things you absolutely have to know. Uh, so whenever we give the passport photos to the customer, um, it's got to be printed in color. Uh, I, this it needs to be done on either 80 or 100 pound cloth cover. Um, so that's a matte photo quality paper, which meets the requirements. And you need to use a little punch and make sure that the pictures are two inches by two inches in size. And the photo of the head has to be one and one third, between one and one third, one three eight inches um, from the bottom of the chin to the top of the head. We'll go into a little bit more detail on that later. Uh, you have to do it with a white background. It has to be facing directly. Um, so you can't be way under or way over when you're taking the picture, get down on the um, customer's face level. Um, they can, the main thing, a lot of people think you can't have a smile on a passport photo. You can have a smile. Um, it just has to be a natural smile and you have to make sure that the, they have their eyes open if they're smiling. Uh, so no crazy faces or anything like that to their smile. Uh, you know, and then you can't have a uniform on. Um, most of everything else is pretty common sense. No, no, uh, no glasses, no sunglasses, no headphones. Um, the glasses might catch a couple people to so make sure that all of your associates are aware of that as well. Uh, moving on, when you're taking this picture, I, I think this is a really good depiction of exactly how the picture should be taken. Um, you need to be four feet away from the person and from uh, and upper body and um, the chest area needs to be covered. You don't really need to do like a major zoom in and don't do it like right underneath the light. It's going to cause a really good shadow, big shadow. And then just make sure that uh, you're facing straight ahead on them. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. Any questions on all of this, any of this so far? Um, and then most importantly, I'm just gonna go through one little live example. I think just to show you guys how easy and straightforward this is. Um, so you're gonna, all of you guys are gonna have your own passport photos uh, or your own little cameras with the SD card. So the, the first part is really simple, right? Uh, take the person over to the white display, take a picture of them, um, and then have it be straightforward. So I got this picture of myself here um, that we're going to use. was not done for passport photos. And the photo is a little bit dark um, for what would work for a passport photo, but we're going to call it good enough for government work. So as soon as you get the passport photo taken, you're just going to put the SD card into your computer. Then just go to step one here, add a passport photo. I guess I should say, each of you guys got a little card in that box that says Passport Photo Software. Um, and it has instructions on how to download this piece of software, Passport Photo 2.1.1. Um, if anybody feels like they're missing that card, um, please put it in the chat box because we also have that data in our back office as well as um, for in just your stores for the info you're going to need to uh, sign up. So just let me know in the chat. I'll make sure that we get you the code. But for now, unless I see anything in the chat, I'm going to assume everybody has their code. So you should, it's a, on that page, it explains exactly how to download the software. It's pretty straightforward. Once you've got it here, we're just going to hit add, um, add photo. Then we're just going to go to that photo that we have. So mine's on the desktop. Yours will be on the SD card when you go to find it. Um, and then it's going to take us to a little page right here. Um, remember how earlier I said that the face has to be between one and one three eighths of an inch? Um, well, that to help us get that, this little circle right here is going to be that depiction. It's right in the middle of those two sizes. So it's important that we make this circle the exact um, circumference of my face. So you, so you can see right now, it's not quite the right size. It's a little bit smaller than the size of my head. So that means that our passport photo is not up to standard right now. So what we're going to need is need to do is take this box and increase it a little bit um, just by grabbing the edge over here and dragging it up or down. And we just need to increase it to the size of my head to make sure that this uh, passport photo is going to be the right size and doesn't get sent back. And lastly, of course, make sure that you have USA marked over here on the side. Um, and once again, it's emphasizing over here, those specifications. Over here, um, there's some chances to do a little bit of photo enhancement and it, to check some measurements if needed. But make sure you're not using this text overlay as we certainly would not want to do that for a passport photo. If you're DPI or you're having any issues with your photo, or, um, off, you're going to see a little error messages right down here. 
uh, for the sake of this example, it'll be okay. The good news is all of your cameras were set up in a way that uh, they will not have DPI issues. So once we get to this point right here, um, you know, we've got our passport photo completely set up. It's exactly how um, the um, they're supposed to be set. So I think that the easiest way to do this is to select this button that says keep space between photos. I do not like to draw cutting lines around the photos. And then down here, we are going to go to the, uh, the left side. We're gonna print these using our printer. And what I would recommend is to just go ahead and keep the 80 to 100 pound gloss cover in one of the trays of your uh, multifunction printer. And that way, this is just a really simple automated process. But if needed, you can always grab a couple sheets and put it into your uh, bypass tray as well. Once you get to this page, we're just going to go over here to page setup. Make sure that everything looks good. And if you need to adjust these uh, margins just a little bit, you certainly can. Um, and then we're going to, it's pretty straightforward from there. You're going to hit printer, and then you're going to go into your printer driver and fill out your settings as you normally would. Um, if you, I sent this email out a little bit earlier um, in the month explaining how to do passport photos, but I'm also going to send it out with the go-to meeting information as well a little bit later. But make sure to use this whenever you're going through with your associates in their examples. But so once we, um, once you went and hit that print button, you're going to have your 100-pound gloss cover print out onto a page just like this. You're going to set how many you want to have printed on the page right here in this section. We're only yeah, delivering we, two to the customer. Yeah. Hey, somebody trying to talk to me? We're good. Thank you. Have a good day. Have a good day. Have a good day. All right. I have no idea who's, uh, who's chit-chatting. I think maybe I can fix that there. <laughs> Perfect. Um, I recommend only doing two copies of this but um, to the customer, because that's all they're going to need for the passport shop. But um, whenever you're printing this thing out, uh, go ahead and print. I do four, but do four or five because you might have some issues in a later step. So once you get to where you've actually printed it out, you can see I had an example where I printed four of these um, and I put the space between. I'm going to go and start using this little uh, clipping tool to actually cut these out of the sheet. Uh, the most important thing would be that whenever you go to clip these things out, sometimes there's going to be a slight white edge because you're going to slightly miss the cut on these things. And that's not acceptable to the passport photo office. So that's why I recommend printing a couple extra of these because one or two of them might get slightly incorrectly cut with a little white edging on the outside. And we do not want to give that to a customer. So go ahead and print out four or five and you'll know that you'll at least have two good ones. You can hand those over to the customer, and this uh, transaction is done. Uh, the great thing about passport photos is the niche market for these is um, to retail them at $14.99. So as soon as we get done with this meeting, just go ahead and go into your admin system and update and unhide the passport photos queue, um, which is number nine in the admin system. Just mark it as a taxable item and change the price to $14.99, you're done. You certainly want to make sure that you're ringing these passport photos up in the passport photos queue. Um, it's really important to us to be able to see how these things were rang up so that we can get the effectiveness of things that we're rolling out. Uh, Michael recommended making sure that the flash is off. Yeah, I mean, that, make sure that the, uh, that the flash is off as long as you're in a well-lit area. Um, so you're going to have to think around with it to make sure that you're uh, so you've got it all set up 100% right. So definitely take the time to try five or six um, different places, make sure that the lighting's right, everything's going through smoothly. Um, so any questions about passport photos at all? Um, and any success stories um, or any issues? Because once again, we, uh, we don't have any speakable passport photo sales. And I know that we have a lot of people calling in the stores. So has anyone had, has anybody not gotten their passport photos set up? I think might be the right question. And I'll be, I'll be looking for chat to hear any questions or um, statements of people that maybe haven't gotten a chance to set up their passport photos. All right, got a couple questions here. Um, John asking, how do you present them to your customer? 
Um, right now, we're currently just handing them the two sets of two by two photos. Um, we may be creating little booklets to give it to them at a later date, um, sometime in the next two to three months. Um, let's see, Dusty said he hasn't had a chance to set it up yet. And Eleni, yes, we are giving them the photos right away. This is the, the whole thing start to finish is about a two to three minute transaction. Um, I went through in time myself last week doing one of these. So it's super fast, super easy. Um, it's not going to have to be a waiting process at all, especially if you're keeping that 80 pound gloss cover in one of the trays of your multifunction machine. So, um, any other any other questions? I think those are great. Um, let's make it a point to make sure that we have those passport photo kits set up today and going through examples with our associates. Because today probably will be the slowest day of the week that we had to work with this. Mm -mm -mm. Any other questions? Going once, going twice, perfect. Um, if you do have any questions, just go and throw them in the chat. We'll, we can, uh, um, best paper, 80 pound gloss cover. Um, Futura makes a um, really good 80 pound gloss cover. It's the only 80 pound gloss cover that I recommend and it's the one that's on the um, required paper sheet. So everybody should have 80 pound gloss cover eight and a half by 11 as a stock paper in your store. If you don't, um, you definitely need it. So <laughs> go ahead and order it as soon as possible. Um, and you get that from Mac. If anybody doesn't have the minimum paper requirements uh, spreadsheet, just uh, put, go it in the chat and I can email it out to everybody in the rest of the materials for the um, go to meeting. Um, do, do, do. Moving on to the passport or banner promo, unless anybody else has any other questions, um, if you do, throw them in the chat. Um, the banner promo, we don't, I don't have a ton to say. The great thing about banner pro, this banner promo is it's the easiest thing to sell in print. It's just super simplistic. There's not a lot you have to know as far as just giving your associates an item that's easy to sell. This is it. Um, it we are selling 13 ounce scrim vinyl. That is an outdoor banner. Um, we sent you guys a little sample book so that the customers can see exactly what it is that they're uh, buying with a banner, as well as examples of the upsells that they can potentially buy. Um, there's, like I said, talk about easy things to sell. This is the cheapest price in town for a banner. Um, if anybody does have some sort of wild, crazy quote that's cheaper than this, we'll match it. Um, no problem. No questions asked. But we, uh, Let's see, Jody, you're going to have to reach out to Michael on that. I'm not getting the sample book, um, but I'll circle back with Michael um, as and find out where. Hmm. Uh, if Michael brought y'all the boxes and the book and the set, um, he should have all the sample books. But um, does any and did anybody else not get their sample book? Uh, it was like a little two-page um, booklet that was prominent together. The front was uh, with scrim vinyl. The back was uh, an example of Tyvek. Mm -mm -mm. All right, I'll send out a little poll later to make sure that everybody does and did not get it. Okay, I will send out a little um, poll later today to see who was who's still missing it. Um, it should have been in the box. Um, with the passport photo kit. So if you haven't opened the box with the passport photo kit, um, it's probably in there. If you didn't get a passport photo kit, then I will circle back with all of you guys later this afternoon. I'll probably just send out a little um, survey monkey asking if you got this stuff. And we'll make sure to send them out to anybody who didn't get them. When you get them, it's a really simple, simple booklet. Um, it's, uh, it's gonna, the top is going to be an example of the 13 ounce scrim vinyl about being hemmed with grommets on it. The, uh, the prices are the cheapest in town, but we do have some premium tack on to the really simplistic pricing being that you're going, you can pay a little extra and get the banner hemmed, which we certainly recommend. You can pay a little extra to get um, extra grommets in the banner. And you can pay extra for zip ties or rope, which you're probably going to need to hang up the banner regardless. Um, these 13 ounce scrim vinyls, um, these are great for outdoor use, um, but they have to be sent to the print hub because there's two different ways. Uh, great question, Jody. And that's the next point that I'm getting to. 
Um, if we are, if this banner, you really need to understand what the customer is intending to use this banner for. If the banner is going outside, you absolutely need to utilize the print hub to print these banners on latex. Um, latex printing is going to be spec to be outside for about two years um, before you see any sign of fading, which means it's going to be destroyed. But it's going to be destroyed, or um, it's going to be dated before the customer needs to replace it, which makes um, for outdoor use, it's no brainer to use the latex. Um, if this is something that the customer is wanting to do for indoor use for whatever reason, which is probably a lot more niche, you can uh, you can choose whether to either utilize the print hub for that item or print uh, using your own aqueous white format, which would be the thrifty banner that Jody's referencing in the chat. Um, just keep in mind that you're just not, anytime you're using an aqueous ink, you're not going to have the outdoor um, lifespan that you would have with a latex or similar option. Typically with uh, aqueous, we're kind of telling people three months outdoor would probably be your bet. And it's not going to be any more expensive to the customer to go with that latex option. So make your life a little easy and just go ahead and go with the latex um, would probably be my recommendation, unless they really just need it immediately and they're okay with the fact that uh, um, it's not gonna last too long. Yeah, I, I know that the Print Hub's doing a ton of banners for Dusty. Um, so Dusty's probably got the testament on whether these things uh, <laughs> are, whether that process e is easy to use or not. But I, I know the banners are relatively simplistic um, for the Print Hub. So we've had no issues to date with banners. Mm -mm -mm. So whenever we're talking uh, banners, yes, it's, it's super simplistic for associates to understand. Three bucks a square foot. If it's a three foot by eight foot, then we just do the little math. Um, so the, Elena, the uh, there was a couple of emails that went out, um, kind of clarifying the pricing. Um, this is uh, so originally our price. If you go into our point of sale, um, the pricing is at six dollars a square foot. Um, this is run. We're running this as a fifty percent off um, promo. So the 50% off is going to make this $3 a square foot to um, sell scrim vinyl. So it's very, very cheap. Uh, cost effective. This is cheaper than you can get it from Vistaprint. It's about the same price you can get it at Office Max. And every other sign vendor in town is going to be at or north of $3 a square foot. So that's certainly where we're starting. We're emphasizing, um, do we, we're not, so on the, um, on the little sample that you see, all of our pricing is going to be right on there. Um, there's a flat charge for banner tape, and then there's a flat rate for um, grommets, um, which um, I'll make sure to send out a PDF of that sample so that you guys have the pricing on your back end, as well as making sure to send the little banner samples to all of the stores later today. Um, hi, Dane. <laughs> Um, so once we get you guys all of that pricing information, um, you'll see the nice thing about that selling tool is that it actually emphasizes to what all of the upsells for a banner are. Um, so the first thing you could do as an upsell, um, which is probably the most simplistic one, is we also offer a material called Tyvek that we can print to. Um, so what Tyvek is, is it's a really lightweight, ultra durable banner. So essentially rip proof, tear proof and extremely, extremely light. So it makes it really, really good for when there's gonna be a ton of wind. Um, wind can tear, tear up a scrim vinyl um, banner. Um, Tyvek is gonna be a lot more durable on that front. Or if we're um, tying this thing up to a chain link fence, Tyvek is really not gonna take a lot of damage from those chain links, whereas a scrim vinyl probably will. Um, scrim, uh, the Tyvek I believe we're retailing at either five or six bucks a square foot. I believe it's five bucks a square foot. But it's not a ton more um, to go with the Tyvek, and you certainly get a lighter, more durable solution. And the samples attached to your little sample book. More grommets, um, adding the hemming. The hemming is a no brainer if you're going to be doing a banner. Um, kind of a must, unless if you want this thing to have long term um, durability. Glad everybody's getting the chance to say hey to each other. <laughs> uh, five bucks a square foot is going to be the Tyvek price, um, which will also be on the sample book. I'm guessing by that um, question, you probably don't have a sample book either, Dusty. So we'll we'll double check with all the stores and get those out um, as needed. Um, the second page of the sample book is going to be a printed sheet of Tyvek, and it's got a big five dollar sign on it. So it'll be easy to keep up. But uh, keep in mind when you're selling these banners that they're going to have to have a way to. Oh, good, you got it. That's perfect. <laughs> 
uh, everybody's going to need a way to hang up these banners. Um, so whenever we uh, we have big, big boxes of zip ties and rope in um, the print hub, so make that an easy upsell. Ask, ask the customers if they uh, want us to go ahead and just throw in some zip ties or rope because it's not a huge um, price point for them. They're probably going to say yes. Um, so any other questions about the banners? I know that there was a, there's, my takeaway from that is we definitely got to circle back and make sure everybody got the book. Um, no, we're not, we kind of moved away from the floor graphics. So we were pretty excited about that. The corporate office definitely gave us a no-no on the um, floor graphics. So no floor graphics. The banner that we sent out that was like an indoor paper banner, you guys feel free to put that up in your print wall within the little four by four section or within, within one of the two four by four sections or your one four by eight section of print wall. Uh, but we're not going to go with the floor graphic on the ground. Mm -mm. I know we're, I'm upset about it too. Um, that was a, that was an above my pay grade decision. I <laughs> uh, just, sometimes you just got to do what you got to do. Um, any other questions you guys have about banners, just like passport photos, feel free to throw them in the chat. Um, otherwise, I'll just keep uh, tracking along, and that way I can make sure that I get you guys done with this thing on a timely basis. Um, I love getting really qualitative feedback from you guys about the Print Hub. This is certainly a new um, embarkation for us. So with any, like all new things, uh, we're going to have, we issues will uh, in some instances come up. Um, I'll say whenever an instance does come up, um, please make sure to send an email to Dane about that and CC me in on it. And we'll make sure to focus in really quickly on, you know, one, addressing your immediate issue. And two, um, how can we put systems in place at our print hub to make sure that those uh, problems do not happen again moving forward? Um, we've gotten some feedback through January, and just as a result of the feedback that we've gotten in January, we've uh, we've put a lot of new systems in place. Um, one, how we're handling wide format jobs as they're coming off of our new latex wide format is completely changed in the month of January. I think the feedback from you guys. There's uh, we're adding a fit time as the jobs are coming off the wide format. We're utilizing a feed roll to feed the um, white format job back up into another roll so that it's not actually being exposed to the floor. We're putting these jobs in tubes, not without a band, without a um, rubber band attached to them. So all of these were um, learning opportunities that have helped us kind of better our process, but we're still learning every day. So make sure to provide us with feedback on how everything's going and we'll update it accordingly. Uh, a lot of you guys probably saw a statement come in from the UPS Store 0615 yesterday. If you did not get a chance to read my email yet, that statement is going to be needed um, so that you can take a royalty exclusion whenever you're filing your royalties today. So take that amount on the statement, look through the statement, make sure everything looks right. If there's any questions about the statements or you think there's any issues, email the print hub at SouthampLogistics.com, get it sorted with them, and once you get a um, correct statement, you're going to use the amount on that statement to take as an exclusion on your royalties. Um, that's going to be in the other exclusion section. I want to ask you to type in the description. Just type in print job. Um, and then make sure to file those uh, statements away somewhere in the event that you have an audit later on. Um, or I should say your inevitable audit. Um, so one thing that we're excited to uh, announce today that's going to um, start, that's going to get implemented as soon as send the email out with all of the files of what we went over today, is uh, currently we get, we're having you guys send an email for uh, placing jobs. But moving forward, um, effective today, after this meeting, we're moving to an online ordering platform, um, which is going to hopefully help make sure that ever, all the questions of things that could come up or miscommunications are being addressed on the front end and not on the back end. I know um, I've seen my fair share of emails coming through to the print hub that say, please print 100. And it's just a PDF. We have no idea what on earth is uh, supposed to be done. So um, we're hoping that this is going to address that issue. And then we've also got an attached item where it's going to actually have you guys be able to have a place to see where your job is at in the workflow and make sure that it's going to be done timely. Um, and it's also going to make sure that we're keeping up with the system timely. So very excited about all of that. I'm going to walk you guys through a quick example of how this job ordering platform works. Um, all of you guys are going to be, when I send you out an email later, I'm going to send you a little 
hyperlink for you to literally just drag onto your desktop so that you can, there'll be a little button for you to click on your desktop and you're just gonna click on it and it's gonna take you right to this little ordering form. So as soon as you click on this, you see it's gonna, it's gonna start your little digital um, print job ticket. So you'll go through, um, since Jody's on the bottom of the chat, we'll make, place a little fake order for her store. Um, let's see, so we'll say that this is Jody and her customer is Billy Bob. Um, you can go ahead and what we're going to recommend doing is going ahead and putting your customer's phone number and email address right here into the guide so that if any minor issues come up, we can just go ahead and reach out to your customer directly um, and make sure that we get this job done as quickly as possible and right back to you. Um, so, and we'll of course be contacting the customer on your behalf um, as the UPS store, whatever store number you are. Um, so whenever, the question will be, when does this job need to be um, completed? Our typical turnaround time is 24 to 48 hours on jobs. So you'll see that it's a little, it's blinking the default option to be one to three business days. However, if you need to have it the next day, um, one, make sure this thing is submitted by noon and select this option right here. That way we know that this is a very time sensitive item. Uh, if it needs to be done same day, um, you know, number one, this, ha this job has to be submitted by noon for us to get the job out same day. And then once you fill this thing out, go ahead and call us immediately so we can know the urgency of this. We don't want to miss anything in the shuffle if it's got to be done in the next couple of hours. Uh, we cannot promise or guarantee these same day items, but we will certainly work with you as much as we can. I know uh, Allison gave us an example in our area manager meeting where she had, a, had put in a job at four o'clock that she needed the next morning and Dane was able to get that done. Um, it was tons of sets of business cards. And he was able to get that done and to him the next morning. So it certainly can happen and we'll work with you as much as we can. But uh, for our little demo example, say one to three business part or business days. Ooh. And then what the question is gonna be, what are we printing? So we have all of our different options set up right here. Uh, does anybody wanna throw something in the chat? I wanna go with, uh, um, tell me what our live example is gonna be. What will it be? Forty-eight by thirty-six canvas. All right. I actually don't think I've done that before, so I'll look forward to seeing it. Let's see. Let's we'll see how this goes. Um, so we're gonna do a canvas, five of them. Uh, this might be a legitimate uh, input for a print job. <laughs> so, um, so we're gonna go ahead and select canvas prints right here. And as soon as we go ahead and press this next button, it's gonna take us to a um, section that's specifically about canvases. So it's not gonna ask us crazy questions like, do we want eighty-pound gloss? cover or text or if this is one up or two up it knows okay we're doing a canvas and we're going to serve up specific thing questions that will help with that so let's see jody said that she wanted this to be a 48 by 36 canvas we've listed kind of like the top 10 most popular sizes for canvases that we get throughout the stores this is obviously not going to be one of those so we're going to place 48 by 38 48 by 36 inch order and then Jody's saying that she's going to need five of those so we're going to go ahead and put other for the quantity because our uh, tracker right now only goes for four um, and then the question is going to be okay how do you want the canvas to be wrapped we all know that we have different options as it relates to wrapping we can do a solid color on the outside we can do a soft reflection or we can literally make the image wrap um, let's see Jody do you know how our image is going to go on the edges uh, we want to do a gallery wrap um, regular soft reflection or a solid border. All right, great, great, great option. So we'll go ahead and select that, move on to the next step. And then lastly, of course, we're going to need to upload the file for the job. Um, so let's just say that, that the park store is wanting that picture. They saw me for the passport photo, thought that was great, and they want to go ahead and utilize that for the 36 by 48 canvas. So we just went ahead and selected that. You'll see it uploaded it. We'll just go ahead and hit upload, and the file has now been attached to your little job ticket. And remember, we need to add a little extra data because I need five of these because we didn't have the option to select five. So there we go. We're going to submit this, and upon this button, or upon hitting the submit button, a few things happened in the back end of the Print Hub. Um, one, the Print Hub just received an email saying that they have a new print job. 
um, with the data file attached and the job ticket. Um, the second thing that's going to happen is effective immediately, you can now see your job or, you know, it, it was also submitted to a job tracking platform that Dane and the Print Hub are going to use to help you keep up with the jobs. Because we need it in one to three business days, but you're going to, you know, the question is what, what's going on with that print job? So another link that you're going to have on your desktop is going to be a link to what's called the job tracker. Um, so you're going to be able to see a little guide like this that actually populates, and you can see what the, where the status of your job is. So um, not for you to be concerned with, but as soon as Dane receives the job, he's got that email. He's going to go through and do a little simple one step here. And just um, by acknowledging that he's starting the print job, he's going to take a little back end step here. And now, effective immediately, he'll walk in and mark this job as being received. So as soon as Jody, uh, maybe she goes and grabs some um, pizza for lunch and then comes back, and she'll see that this job has now been added to the print hub's queue. And by knowing that it's here, she'll know that um, Dane had to have gone in and put in a manual input. So he knows and manually marks this item as being received. So that's how we know that the job was received by the print hub. As soon as we actually get started, um, there's going to be a number of different status checks. Um, so this thing can move through seven different processes in the print hub. Um, you can go from being re received to in design. If there's any, if we're doing graphic design work for the customer, then there's going to be a design approval step and waiting for a PDF approval. Um, so once we've gotten through those uh, steps, um, this thing will get marked to in production, and you'll be able to kind of more or less see the status of where this is done. Then eventually, once this thing is completely finished, um, this is going to be marked as complete. Um, and we're going to go in and just, uh, and Dane's going to type in the tracking number for your job right here so that you have it to be able to uh, communicate with your customer when it's going to be arriving to the store and be ready for them to pick up. Um, so we're super excited about this. We hope we certainly hope that it provides a little bit more clarity on what's going on when your job is due, making sure that we know what's going on. And hopefully this will be a value add for all of you guys. Any questions about how that job ordering is going to work? Or uh, let's see. How will we know what was discussed between the print hub and our customers so that when our customer asks us a question at pickup or if they called us? Our intention is going to be to never pick up the phone and talk to the customer. Um, presuming that you have followed all the steps correctly and have uploaded a qualitative good file, um, there won't be any need for us to contact the customer. And if there are any issues with the file, we're first going to reach out to the store. Um, but in a lot of instances, the print hub is being utilized by stores that don't know as much about what's going on, or maybe they, uh, the print or the manager is just saying, hey, I think you need to address these things directly with the customer. That's the moment when we're going to pick up the phone and really contact the customer, um, especially if it's time sensitive thing then, uh, and you're saying it's a time sensitive thing, then we, we'll just go ahead and cut the middleman out and communicate directly with them. But um, we're, we're certainly not going to be picking up the phone and having day-to-day -day conversations with each individual customer. Um, but if important things did come up in that conversation with the customer that we have, then we'll, the Print Hub will be communicating that directly to you. Um, but it really, uh, the communication should only be extended to things like the print, the graphic design work was done, and here's an intact sample of your proof. If approved, then we'll get this into production ASAP. Um, do, do, do. Any other questions about this print job ticket? Hey, cool. Um, I'm certainly going to be fielding any more questions you guys have. Um, but um, that's really all that we had to walk through today. Um, I hope that this was helpful and insightful. And I'm going to stay on the good team meeting for another five minutes or so in case anybody has any questions. You'll see an email come through with me on a, with a couple of different files and links in probably about 30 minutes. And then you'll have uh, we'll have a follow up with all you guys about the sample uh, later this afternoon. So thank you guys so much for tuning in. And once again, if you have any questions, just let me know in the chat box. Have a great rest of the day.